the book of Proverbs, chapters three and four. My child, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Do not let loyalty and faithfulness forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. So you will find favour and good repute in the sight of God and of people. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing to all their flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So Dave last week set the scene for our sermon series in the book of Proverbs and he was talking about how Proverbs are about wisdom and really Proverbs are a way for us not to rely on our own wisdom or solely on our own wisdom. Proverbs take us away from ourselves, just thinking about what we're thinking about. They're a way of us of, of having the store of wisdom of, of generations, of thousands of years that we wouldn't have on our own. And that wisdom that then begins to shape our beliefs, how we see God, how we see ourselves, how we see others and what we do. They're not an instruction manual, but they're a, they're a kind of lens that we can choose to look through that will mean we see things differently. So that's why they're useful, that's why they're in the Bible. And I'm going to focus on these two verses. Firstly, do not be wise in our own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. What is it to be wise in our own eyes? Is it to, to be the people that think we, we understand, we know things well? We have knowledge, and if, if you're um, anything like me, well, I pride myself on knowing, knowing about things, understanding things, having knowledge. That's something that I really hunger for. But yet, this piece of the Word of God seems to say, do not be wise in yourself. I wonder, is that a particular challenge to us at the moment? You know, the past 500 years or so have, have taught us that knowledge is a good thing, that wisdom is something we can find, that understanding is something that we can work towards. It's almost made a god of understanding, of knowledge. But maybe that's made it harder for us to rely on listening to God. Because we, I mean, I hate to admit how much education I've had. I've had far too much education. I spent a long time at school, and, and even before that I went to kindergarten, I think, and then, then after that I went to university for eight years. I had far too much education, and I have a, have a sinking feeling that that means that my head is filled with all this information that may mean that I'm finding it harder to know God and know his truth. What do we have at the moment? We have books, we have newspapers, we have Google, uh, we have Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and we have apps on our phones, we have Wikipedia, we have um, bigger libraries than have ever existed in the world before. 
It, it, it seems like we have so much information, don't we? More information that we can get far more easily than anybody else's, even 10 years ago, could have got. And we can ha- therefore have all the knowledge, more knowledge, than people could ever have dreamt of having in the past. But do we know the truth? The Bible says that Jesus is the Word, the truth, that that everything that's been spoken about made flesh come into being. He is God. He is the answer. So all the truth of all the worlds, of all the Bibles, of of everything is distilled in Him. Not in words, but in a in a person, in God Himself on earth, in flesh, in the Spirit. The irony is, is we need to read His Word to know that in reading we will not find truth itself. It's only in Christ that truth is found. Only Jesus, through the Holy Spirit, will lead us to the truth of the Father. Do you want truth? I think we do, don't we? With all this knowledge, all this information we have, we, it's almost harder to know what is true. People fight and argue more and more, it seems. The more information there is, the more we argue about what is true and what isn't true. I think we want truth, don't we? What is true? Maybe we do want some knowledge. You know, it's helpful if you're driving somewhere to know the way. <laughs> we want some information. We want to know what the weather forecast is going to be like tomorrow. Then yes, of course we do. But we want to know what is true. What is the truth that I can rely on, that I can stand on? And, and the Proverbs are trying to bring us to that truth that is, is God himself. Not wisdom in our own eyes. The point of preaching, other preachers may disagree with me, but the point of preaching is not for us to have more information, not for us to have even, just have more understanding or more knowledge. The point of preaching is not for me to throw a thousand words at you. It's for us to, to know the truth of Christ, be in the truth of Christ, not our own wisdom, but in him. Imagine then I am uh, planning a trip somewhere. Uh, does anybody have a favourite place in the world, somewhere, somewhere not in, uh, in the UK, that they, they particularly think I should go to? Where, where, where do you think I should go? Trinidad. Okay, so say I am, I'm going to Trinidad and I want to find the, the best restaurant to eat in in the whole of Trinidad, which I would want to because I like eating. And, uh, and I've heard the food's quite good. Gail's always telling me about it. Now, there is so much information. I could Google and they would come up with hundreds of restaurants. I could get guidebooks out of the library, I'm sure, that would tell me all about the different parts. I could, you know, I could look on Instagram and I bet there would be tens of thousands of people posting photos of the meals they've eaten in restaurants in Trinidad. I could look on Facebook, and I bet there are Facebook groups about the food in Trinidad. I bet there are. If you try hard enough to to find them, I bet there'll be loads. I could go on all their websites, and I could see all their menus, and how amazing they say they are. But would that, all that information, help me to know what the best place to eat was? I suspect it would just leave me to be completely confused, thinking, what on earth do I do? Where do I go? What I'd want is somebody who knows that place, who has been to all those places, and can tell me this is the best place to eat. And it's a trivial example, but but what I'm saying is that all this information can just confuse us, cannot give us clarity, it just gives us more things to think about. What we need is someone who knows the truth, that knows what is best. And that's not me, and it's not you. It's just God. He is the truth. 
Wisdom is not knowing more, but it's knowing the one who knows what is true. And he says, fear God, turn away from evil. Fear God, that's not a popular phrase at the moment, is it? Let's come to church and you should fear God. But don't think of this as the word of, you should come to church and you should be kneeling down and be afraid. It's, it's saying, respect God. Think that we, he's the one, he is the, he's the ultimate authority, not ourselves. Do you see, it's, it's a position of humility. This, this um, proverb is, is saying that we need to be humble before God about our wisdom and our truth and know that it's not us, it's him. Um, if you were a child in a school, you, you might be told, fear the head teacher, not, not be afraid of them, but respect them, do what they tell you. You know, look out for them, so when they instruct you to do something, you do what you're instructed to do. That kind of fear, respect, honour. Fear God and turn away from evil. Imagine the same school where everyone does what they want. In a class, the, the children are told, today we can do whatever you want. And a child says, I'm going to get the paints out and I'm going to do painting on the floor. Another child says, I'm, I want to do PE. And they, they get out a ball and start throwing it around the room. Another child says, I, I want to do some music. And they start playing the, the recorder. Uh, another, another child says, I, I need to do some quiet reading. And they try and find a corner to do some quiet reading. Another child says, I love maths. And, and, and let's do some maths together. What would it be? It would be complete chaos. When we're just doing what we feel we should do. And, that, and that's the picture of what sin is. Is when we're all doing what we feel we want to do. And we're not guided by someone. Guided by God to do what... He wants us to do. That's the evil. This proverb is saying, turn away from, turn away from the evil of, of thinking we should just do whatever our own wisdom says we should do. Every child in that class would have thought, we know exactly what's best. Let's not have our own wisdom, but have God's. Proverbs point us away from ourselves. Sin means turning back to ourselves. And what's the end result? Well, I, I love this idea of it. It is healing and refreshment. Isn't that an odd combination, the Proverbs say? That when we're not wise in our own eyes, when we fear the Lord, when we turn away from evil, we find healing and refreshment. I, um, not long ago, just at the last minute, did my tax return. And every year I have to do my tax return because clergy have complicated tax. And, um, and every year I look at it and I have this fear. This is a confession to you. I have a fear of, oh my goodness, have I messed something up? <laughs> have I swindled the government? I promise I haven't seen. Have I, uh, you know, have I done something wrong? Have, am I going to mess this up so that I'm going to owe thousands of pounds or, you know, somebody's going to find out I've done something wrong. And then I have to fill in this document, and every year I look at it, and, um, and it is pages of headings and subheadings and, and notes going to here and there, and, and it, is, it terrifies me, and I think I could do this, in theory. But luckily I have a lady that I call, and she is a clergy tax advisor. And, and I phone her up and she, we spend 15 minutes on the phone and suddenly it's all okay. Because she knows and understands in a way that I do not know and understand. And she has a very calm and friendly voice. And she asks me how I'm doing. And she takes me through the form and she fills it in with me and it's all okay. And that's what I think it can be with us and God. When we have fears, when we're confused, when we think we've worked it all out, when we don't know what to do, when we know that he is the only hope, he comforts us. He says, I know, I understand, you don't need to be wise, you don't need to work it out. And he brings that peace, that healing and refreshment to our souls. 
are much better than that lovely tax advisor brings me every single year. A friend of mine uh, is called Benny and uh, she's a doctor in East London. And a few months ago she was diagnosed with breast cancer and then, um, and then she has had uh, you know, um, you know, samples taken and, and now she has to have radiotherapy and she's had surgery and, and then chemotherapy. And yet next week we're going over, and, and a few other people are going over to East London to pray with people on the streets with Benny for healing. Because she, even though she's paced, facing this fearful situation, and she doesn't know what that will mean for the rest of her life, she's younger than me, she, she hasn't been able to have children yet, she is not in that place of trying to work it out herself. She is not trying to be wise in her own eyes. She knows that she has peace in God, even as she's unsure what the future holds. She has found the ultimate healing, that refreshment that she is saved, that she doesn't need to work out the rest of her life. Healing and refreshment, not in her own wisdom of being a lecturer at a university and a doctor with loads of qualifications, but the healing and refreshment of knowing that she is safe in Jesus Christ. I think this proverb says to me, we don't need to know anything. We just need to know more of Jesus. Not understand, we just need to know him, find healing in him. And that's all we need. Amen. Let's take a moment to pray together. And I'm aware that um, for some people you're, you're maybe, um, you, you're like me, you take pride in knowing and understanding and and, and knowing many things and um, maybe like me we need to be humbled God needs to, to to make us hunger less for our own wisdom and knowledge if that's that's you maybe like me repent now say to God I, I, I'm sorry that I've tried to work it all out I trust in you. I trust in you, that you are enough. And really that same prayer for anyone here who is suffering uh, with some illness. Maybe you don't know the what the future holds, like my friend. May you find this morning that healing and refreshment in your loving friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. Father in heaven, we come before you today, confident that you hear us, expecting you to answer us and give us your healing and your peace as we pray. Today we want to give you thanks for Shirley, for this wonderful human being you gave us to uh, and to our community, we give you thanks for her devotion to this church and her kindness and care to each of us as individuals over many years. We pray for her family and friends as they mourn her death and ask for her wisdom as we make plans for her funeral. We commend her into your hands, giving thanks that she's now free uh, of her suffering and pain. And we also give thanks for the hope at the heart of our faith that in Christ death has been defeated and we are promised fullness of life forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, this morning we pray for the situation in the Ukraine. It's not always easy to see clearly into all sides of the conflict, but we do pray for a world free of violence and bloodshed, in which disagreements can be worked out peaceably. And we ask for those who lead our nations that they may act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly. 
We pray for Christians on all sides of the conflict, uh, Christians in the armed forces, those in leadership, but also Christian civilians in the Ukraine. We join with them in prayer, asking that your kingdom come in that place and around the world. Give all of them wisdom in their own response to the things that they are asked to do and to what is happening. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord above, we give you thanks for our church, we give you thanks for Justin, our Archbishop, Sarah, Bishop of London, and Graham, uh, area bishop in Kensington area. We pray for Bishop Graham as he will move into a new role at the Centre for Cultural Witness, working on telling the Christian story more proactively and effectively in public life. In our local area, we give you thanks for Ali Walton and her service to All Saints Church, Isleworth. Be with her and her husband, Steve, as they move on to new opportunities in March and be with that church as they navigate an interregnum and look to appoint a new minister. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And in our own community, we give you thanks for so many people who do so many things, uh, but particularly for our church wardens, for Gail and for her um, hard work and care, for Jenny at St John's and uh, all that they do on our behalf. And for all who serve, we ask your blessing upon them. And we also think of those who are struggling in life today, in mind or body or spirit, those who maybe face risk or danger, those who grieve or mourn, those who find themselves travelling far from home, and those who've been in and out of hospital. Particularly we remember Audrey, Diane, David and Joyce, Jennifer, Mary, Olga, Wilson, and there'll be many others. And so just in a moment of quiet, uh, why not lift to God in your own hearts those on your mind? So Father, we commend to you all of these things and uh, place our prayers in the hands of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 